name is Bryn Kirsch, and I'm going to be giving my presentation on introduction to HVAC. Uh, so I'm going to start off with my inspiration a little. Um, so in the past, I had done more projects designing and creating buildings. However, this time, I wanted to do something a little more in-depth and take my architectural background um, to a new level. HVAC is something that we don't necessarily cover. Um, however, I really wanted to explore this topic on my own. This idea initially arose when I started looking for jobs and I noticed that there's a lot of architectural jobs that involve H HVAC. Uh, on top of this, I'm very passionate about architecture, so I'm always looking for ways to expand my familiar familiarity and knowledge when it comes to architecture. Fortunately for me, we have the freedom to choose our projects with some guidelines provided by Dr. Joseph Wunderlich. Exploring this topic has been extremely beneficial for me, and I think now I have a more clear understanding of how HVAC systems work and how they're designed and installed. So I'm gonna begin with my setup. Um, I decided to do a small office building. This is mainly um, so I could just focus on the learning process and um, you know, focus on exactly how the HVAC system works. So I have one floor in my office building. There's a large lobby and two smaller office rooms. There's two bathrooms and there's um, a walk-in room as well in between two double doors. Um, the HVAC system in this building is located in the ceiling. Uh, this large picture right here is what my building looks like. This green is over here is an example of what a more complicated system looks like. So you can see why I chose to do something a little bit more simple um, so that I could really understand what was going on. Um, this large space right here is the lobby. And then there's two extra rooms. These are just smaller offices. Here in the corner, um, space four and space five, these are the restrooms. And space six is this walk-in area right before you enter the building. Um, by using rooms and spaces, Revit can take into account how large the room is by using parameters, lengths, and the area of the room. This is really important um, when you're trying to find the data. Revit also gives you the ability to change these values if you choose to. This technology is really powerful so that you can add information like the occupancy number of the room and services used in the room um, and the uses of the room specifically. So you could change like what kind of countertops you have, what kind of, fl what kind of flooring you have, or what the room is used for, whether it's gonna be like a gym or an office that's gonna determine um, how you want your heating and cooling. This green space right here, um, each of these blocks represent a different one of the rooms and how Revit is um, changing the heating and cooling. Um, so that's how Revit sees it. Um, as you can see, this red arrow is pointing to um, what I entered to be Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. So this office is actually designed um, to be here in this climate, which is really important because when you're dealing with heating and cooling, um, you really need to take into account how hot or cold it is outside because um, that really does play, play a great role within your project. Um, you can also see that I've entered that it's an office and that's really important and all this like pays into um, the data that you're going to be given back. Um, as I spoke about before, this is how Revit can determine how hot or cold the temperature is. So for example, I've entered Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania into this data sheet. Revit then takes that information and it'll predict how much work the HVAC system, HVAC system will have to do in, your, in order to keep each room at a comfort, comfortable temperature. Here is a 3D version of the um, project that I designed. There's no roof on this picture, so you can easily see how the HVAC system is designed and how it distributes air. Uh, the main unit is the black box, which, black box, which is called the air handling unit. And that's right here. Um, I've also used rounded elbow ducts to ensure that everything fits nicely and all of the air units are a good location in each of the rooms. The air handling unit and the air terminals are connected by ducts and flex ducts. And you can see the arrows pointing to each of these types of materials. The air terminals are square spaces in the front corners and two at the back and then one more in the lobby. This, there's one per room and that ensures that each of the rooms feel a comfortable temperature. Sometimes in bigger rooms, uh, such as this one, there are more of the um, air terminals and that's just because you need more power to heat and cool this room. Uh, the air terminals are pretty common when the HVAC system is in the ceiling. Um, however, there, sometimes it does come from below. That's whenever the HVAC system is in the basement and this is more common in houses just because they normally have basements. Um, however, they can be in the ceiling, such as this project is. 
here is a side view of the project, and this is just so you can see um, what you would actually be seeing in the room. So similar to the room that we're in right now, you can see the air terminals, and that's these blue pieces right here. So this is gonna be the ceiling, and these are gonna be just the pieces that you can see. All of the HVAC and the piping and the ducts, that's all gonna be above the ceiling, and you're not gonna be able to see any of that. Uh, this is some of the data that Revit was able to give me. Um, this one is able to tell me the kind of building, which is an office, the square feet, um, which is about 1,300 square feet, and the volume. The middle column also allows us to know the peak cooling loads. So for example, from the building summary, we know that the peak cooling total load of this is about 16,000. The information is very helpful when architectural engineers are trying to determine what kind of HVAC system that will be most beneficial for this building. You can see the rest of the information it gives to you as well. The maximum cooling capacity, the peak heating load, and the peak heating airflow. This technology is so advanced, all you have to do is create the building you wish and plug in the information, such as the type of building and where the building is located, and Revit has the power to tell you all of this information, and then all the architectural engineers have to do from here is take this information and determine what kind of HVAC system they think will be most beneficial for this. So they would take these values and then go find an HVAC system that they think would be best. Um, and this, that's just gonna be the difference between how powerful it's gonna be and how large your building is. Here's another project summary. Um, this tells you when I created it and um, it tells you it's in 2016, which is important. And then um, it should also say the address in here, which would be Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. And then it tells you the, la the latitude, the longitude, uh, the mean daily range, and that's all very important when determining your HVAC system. Um, whenever architectural engineers go to make an HVAC system, they're going to look at this information first because that's very crucial. From here, um, if I were to take this project any further, I would want to be able to find the proper HVAC system. Um, my project, basically all I did was create all of the data that you would need to do that. And then the next step for the architectural engineers would be to take this data and go on again and find um, the, H the exact HVAC system that they would like to use. Um, so I think that's where I would want to take this project next if I were to continue it. In addition to that, um, if I were to get that far, then I would like to um, continue on with this um, building and make it look a little bit nicer on the inside and on the outside and make it look a little bit more like an office space. And here's a list of my resources. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Thank you.